In addition to the obvious risks that firefighters face in their work, they are also subject to less commonly recognized dangers, including those posed by exposure to asbestos. Asbestos exposure can cause disabling or fatal diseases such as asbestosis, lung cancer, gastrointestinal cancer, and mesothelioma, a form of cancer that affects the membranes covering the lungs and body organs. A 1990 study of 226 New York City firefighters, most of whom had been firefighters for at least 20 years, found that nearly half had chest x-rays which showed abnormalities characteristically caused by asbestos exposure. In addition to its well-known use as a fire retardant and heat insulator, asbestos was also used as a reinforcing or binding agent in plastics and cement. As such, as late as the 1980s, asbestos was used in building materials including plaster, drywall materials, floor tiles, roofing products, wall and ceiling insulation, and electric wiring insulation. In addition, asbestos blankets, gloves, and aluminized asbestos suits used standard equipment for many firefighters. During a fire, firefighters can be exposed to a broad spectrum of construction materials. And in older buildings, especially those built before the 1980s, many of these materials contain asbestos. The hot air currents at a fire can carry asbestos fibers that are released when cold water hits hot asbestos, or structural failures cause asbestos-containing components to break. Also, fire may cause non-friable asbestos materials, materials in which the asbestos fibers are not easily broken apart, to become friable. When firefighters wear a self-contained breathing apparatus, they are protected from fiber inhalation. However, they often remove their respiratory equipment after the fire is mostly controlled and they are searching through the debris for any remaining embers. This has the potential to expose them to airborne asbestos. In addition to the asbestos exposure that can occur during activities such as pulling ceilings or pipes down or opening walls to be sure fires are completely extinguished, firefighters face additional risks because the asbestos fibers released during a fire may get on the firefighter's protective clothing. If contaminated clothing is not handled properly, it can pose a threat and a risk to anyone who comes in contact with the clothing. Another source of risk for firefighters is when buildings that are scheduled for demolition are intentionally burned for training purposes. Although removing all regulated asbestos materials from such buildings before they are burned is now required by regulations of the National Emission Standards for Hazardous Air Pollutants, this was not always the case. If such material is missed, the fire can release asbestos fibers into the air. Firefighters who asbestos exposure has made the news are those who responded to the September 11, 2001 attack on the World Trade Center in New York, as well as those involved in the recovery efforts in the weeks and months following the attacks. Asbestos was used in the construction of the North Tower and when it was built in the early 1970s. And although some of it had been removed from the 1980s onward, hundreds of tons remained and were released during the attack. Testing of the air around the World Trade Center revealed elevated asbestos levels in the first few days after the attacks before they fell within federal standards. However, since the form of asbestos found, short crystal tile fibers, is a type often seen in mesothelioma tissue, experts are concerned about the long-term effects. Because firefighters were among the most heavily exposed populations, they may be at greater risk of developing asbestosis mesothelioma, or other asbestos-related diseases. Diseases associated with asbestos exposure generally do not appear for 20 or more years after initial exposure, so even people who haven't worked as a firefighter in many years may still be at risk for developing mesothelioma or another asbestos-related disease. Firefighters and former firefighters are urged to discuss their possible asbestos exposure with their doctor and to receive regular checkups for any signs of asbestos-related disease. Thank you for watching. This video was produced by Asbestos.net, a leading resource on all aspects of asbestos and mesothelioma. Our priority is to inform victims about the devastating effects of asbestos exposure, mesothelioma, asbestos cancer, asbestosis, 
and other asbestos-related diseases and to advise them with a wealth of information. Individuals whose lives have been touched by mesothelioma have numerous questions and concerns. Their caregivers and family members also need accurate, reliable information. If you or a loved one have been diagnosed with mesothelioma or asbestos cancer and need more information, we invite you to visit and explore the thousands of pages of oncologist-reviewed material on asbestos.net, to call our convenient toll-free number shown below and speak with a mesothelioma specialist, or to use the simple contact form found at asbestos.net to request a free copy of our informative books, custom inserts, and DVD. Asbestos.net, information and help for patients and families.